Hi everyone, welcome. It's good to be here. In that four seconds it took me to greet you just then, 3,000 Instagram photos have been uploaded, 29,000 tweets sent, 222 Google searches done, half a million YouTube videos watched, and over 10 million emails sent in just that four seconds. We live in a technological world. Our cars tell us where to go. Our phones feel like they're our life partners. Work is very dependent on it. And we can know anything, anytime, anywhere. And if the electricity goes out, most things grind to a halt. This is the world we live in. And this is the world our kids are growing up in. Technology dependence is increasing. And so too are technological jobs. In Australia, STEM jobs, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics jobs, have increased by 150% compared to non-STEM jobs. But the STEM workforce has only increased by 15%. And what's even more concerning is that only 16% of the STEM qualified workforce are female. Now, these figures show us that there is a workplace growth issue, so there may not be enough people for the jobs in the future. But there's also a lack of diversity in the technology, science, engineering and mathematics fields. Albert Einstein's words are as important today as they've ever been. He said, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. This is why we need diversity. We need diversity in gender, in beliefs, in culture, in religion, in ideas, in our STEM workforce. Otherwise, we're going to struggle to solve the problems in the future. But you, the parents, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the friends, you hold the key to unlocking this issue. You are so important to your kids' life that 68% of girls in the Asia-Pacific region said that you, the parents, are the biggest influence of whether they study STEM, compared to 9% for their peers and 8% for their teachers. And that is why you hold the key. That is two out of three believe that you are the major influence. So if you make your kids believe, have confidence, have courage in choosing a STEM job, then you'll be going a long way to solving these diversity and growth issues. And how are you going to do that? By becoming a computer coder today, yourself. <laughs> now, this means that you're about to become creators, problem solvers, lateral thinkers, critical thinkers, and makers. You're going to develop skills now in imagination, creativity, persistence, resilience, grit, and determination. But beware, coding is not for the faint-hearted. It takes a lot of failure before you succeed. And that means you need to be brave, you need to be strong, and you need to keep going. Before I get you to write your first code, before you become coders, I want to describe what is actually computer coding. All your technological devices that you have, your GPSs, your computers, your iPads, they are just a bunch of electrical components put together. They can't think. Well, not yet anyway. But it is the computer code that makes them do something. And that is just a simple set of instructions, step by step, just like a recipe. If you don't write it, it doesn't do it. OK, so now let's get you computer coding. Let's go through the steps of how we're going to be coders. So first, step one, imagine. What is it that you want to do? What idea? What thing do you want to fix? Step two, create. Let's take that idea 
and break it down into little bits. Let's storyboard it. Let's design it. Let's write about it. Also, think about your user. Computer coders have a lot of empathy. They need to be constantly thinking about how's their user going to feel? How are they going to use it? What colors? What sounds? Also think about what exceptions. Are they going to mash the board? Are they going to click the mouse when we ask them to press a button? You need to think about all of that and design it. Step three, now let's code it. So we'll take that design that you've got and we will translate it into code. Now there's a lot of different coding languages out there, just like there is a lot of languages in the world. And it just depends on what device you want to put your idea, your app onto. Step four, try. Now this is build and try, build and try. Really quick little iterations. If you don't know if something is going to work, try it, prototype it, and ask yourself a lot of questions. Ask yourself, how did it make my user feel? Did it work? If it didn't work, is it the way I wanted it to work? If it's not, maybe try again and keep trying. And finally, share it. Share it with the greater community. Share it with your team. Share it with just yourself. And then you can do keep doing this over and over again if you want to keep doing it better. Okay, so let's do it all together now. Let's imagine we're going to do an app today for you, the audience, to clap your hands once. We're going to work out now, we're going to create how that's going to happen. So, we put our hands like this, they have to be facing each other, and we're going to break it down, and then we move it, there's a sound, and then we move it out. That's our design. Now let's have a look at the code. I'm using MIT Scratch visual coding language here. This is your left hand. Now we have to write the code for your left hand, and we have to write your code for your right hand, otherwise it doesn't work. So let's have a look at this. We, when I say go, it's going to switch to costume left hand. You're going to point it to your right hand. You're going to keep repeating and moving it until it sound, and then you're going to go backwards. And the same for the right hand, just opposite. All right, let's do this. Let's, you all be coders. Ready? When I say go, we're going to go. One, two, three, go. Well done. You are coders. You have just read and implemented your first piece of code. You have made and you created. You have imagined and you made. It's a great feeling and you can do it. But there's one more thing I want you guys to do when you leave here. I want you to spread the news. I want you to tell everyone in your workplace that they are the key to solving these issues of diversity and growth in the STEM industry. I want you to talk to your bosses, talk to your leaders, and get them to set up a workplace maker space in your workplace, your community centre, your aged care facilities. What's a maker space? Well, a work, imagine this. Set up in your tea room, on one table, a couple of laptops, and on there, maybe MIT Scratch's program that you can fiddle with the code. Over another table, a couple of robots to play sumo wrestling. On another table, there might be a microscope set up with some seawater, some dirt samples, and finally, there might be an electronic circuit with some lots of leads and flashing lights. Over lunch, you get to create, experiment, explore, imagine, make, communicate, collaborate, enjoy, and learn all about the technology that is there. And that night, when you go home, and you sit around your dinner table, and you talk with your kids about what it was you did at your workplace maker space, all of a sudden, you are talking the same tech talk that they are talking about, together. There is also a, um, a financial benefit to having workplace maker spaces in your workplace. It's good for innovation, collaboration, cooperation, problem-solving, lateral thinking, challenging. 
These are all skills that businesses today want and need their staff to have. And it's also good for the country. It's good for the country's STEM workforce. Now, creating a diverse technology workforce is a complicated issue. We are implementing fantastic programs targeting girls and other kids in our primary, secondary and tertiary education. Plus, we are funding partnerships between business and education in science. But let's go that next step. Let's, um, let's influence, the biggest influence on our children's life, you, the families, the parents, let's get you enjoying coding. Let's get you learning. If you believe you can do it, and you believe your kids can do it, and then your kids believe they can do it, just think about how many amazing, diverse, creative, imaginative scientists, engineers, mathematicians, coders we are going to have in the future. And let's think about how ma many problems that they are going to solve. Remember that the best science, technology, engineering, and mathematics role model for your kids is you. Thank you.